So, uh, hi everyone, this is uh, Dion Null. I'm the CEO of the Global Resilience Partnership. We just had a session here on how we integrate climate risk into government uh, decision making. So this is a partnership between the Global Resilience Partnership, uh, the Global Commission on Adaptation and supported by the UK government. And we're interested in the key role that uh, central planning departments and uh, ministries of uh, finance can play in driving uh, more resilient approaches. We think that these ministries have a a very strategic role uh, in the process of integrating climate risk. So this was a very good session. We heard from a number of countries. We heard from Philippines, the Permanent Secretary uh, for Finance in uh, the Philippines, who outlined a number of initiatives that the Philippines are taking, as well as representatives from Bangladesh and, and uh, Uganda. What was striking to me was how much is already happening. So there's so much happening in these countries. Uh, we need to see how that how we can um, allow these uh, learnings and knowledge to be exchanged between countries so that we all can move uh, forward and support each other in terms of becoming uh, more resilient. Uh, there was also a lot of uh, emphasis on that the finance ministries uh, don't operate in isolation. We need to work with other departments, sectoral departments as well, uh, but still believing that the finance ministries have a specific convening role and they can convene these departments and drive that uh, ecosystem. And the final point which we were very interested in is how do we do this capacity development which leaves a lasting impact uh, in the countries. And so we heard from a number of participants who especially, especially uh, emphasize the role of universities uh, and the role that universities can do in terms of holding capacity, holding skills and expertise that can support governments within uh, their countries. And so specifically looking at how can we build on existing networks of universities to drive uh, this approach forward. Uh, we had a very interesting session here at the PCCB Hub, uh, actually one of the best sp uh, spots and places for, for side events. So we were talking about circular economy, which is a super hot topic, especially because now it's getting its momentum even as a medium to tackle climate change. So uh, we had three main uh, panels. The, the first was describing uh, basically the, the great momentum that this topic is having in Latin America. There is a very good technical assistance provided by the CTCN, the technology mechanism of the UNFCCC, whereby four countries, Brazil, Mexico, Uruguay and Chile are developing their roadmap. So we are, we are, we are actually supporting their, their work on developing this roadmap. And, um, so countries were also uh, describing how they see this technical assistance improve their NDCs, especially for the update and the uh, increase of ambition of, of next year. Then we had uh, UNEP and UNIDO having uh, our co-host agencies of the CTCN having their activities uh, in, uh, in Latin America describing their main lessons learned. And finally, we had a super interesting panel uh, featuring international organizations and uh, the private sector. And they were basically giving us their, their perspective. So I have three key takeaways. The first one is that uh, it's very, very clear that countries are struggling with uh, how to access climate finance. Uh, and they're looking for answers. Uh, there are so many different initiatives that are trying to help countries. Uh, there are many funds like the Green Climate Fund, uh, the Adaptation Fund, uh, and several others. Uh, but having these funds is just a first step. Uh, countries need to understand uh, the access modalities. That's the first thing. The second thing is that countries are struggling with capacity. Uh, capacity issues around how to, once you have understood the modalities and how to access, but capacity to actually articulate the project in a way that it can be financed. So a lot of countries need uh, support. It's very, very clear uh, that countries need support in the area. The other thing is that countries appreciate peer-to-peer -peer learning. We can have all the international support on capacity building. We can bring in experts. We can bring international firms to support countries. But ultimately, what countries really value is when they can look at the other country next door and say, how did you do it? Because we are in the same circumstances. How were you able to, how did you manage? Uh, those two peer-to-peer south-south exchange are critically important. These are my three takeaways. Uh, so my name is Mike Irwin uh, from the UK and I was moderating a panel today with uh, panelists from Mexico and Colombia and Vietnam and we were able to talk about 
uh, what we've been doing on capacity building, particularly in the areas of legislation and governance, to work with partner countries to help them deliver on their ambitions with regards to climate action. Okay, so from the award ceremony that we have today, that is called the Gender Just Climate Solutions, we can have many takeaways. One of them is that women have a leadership that is going to ensure an effective climate action. They are not only just transforming the lives of their families with the caring uh, yeah, activities that they have at home, but they are actually also, when they are in power, they are having more outreach. They are starting to change the lives of their neighbors. They are starting to change the life of citizens, no matter if it's urban or in rural areas, no matter if it's women or if it's men or if it's kids. And I think that this is something that is showing us that we need to include gender considerations within our climate policy making processes, within all the activities that are we're taking place here at COP. It's not only about one thing, one small little project, but how are these actions actually reflected in negotiations like Article 6, for example, in loss and damage. How women that are in the front lights of the effects of climate change can start to change actually and to transform their lives. So here we saw different solutions in the transformative, in the technical and non-technical aspects. So we had a side event, uh, a joint side event between the Adaptation Fund and the Green Climate Fund uh, on the community of practice for direct access entities. It was a formal launch of this community of practice and my key takeaways from this event it was the importance of partnerships and working together to support developing country access to climate finance and to support the implementation of um, adaptation on the ground in developing countries. So we had a very lively discussion. The community of practice is a self-driven initiative, self-driven by the developing countries themselves. Uh, it has managed to uh, put together a committee of six individuals and a chair of the committee who are driving activities under the community of practice and they have an action plan which identifies capacity gaps and capacity needs for developing countries which will be supported by the Adaptation Fund and GCF through the Adaptation Fund and GCF partnership. So it's a very significant event in that it enables consolidation of um, identification of capacity building needs in developing countries but more importantly the process is driven by the developing countries themselves and of course the GCF and the Adaptation Fund are committed to supporting uh, the addressing of these gaps. I think that uh, the day really gave us an opportunity to share um, across many different aspects of the work that we're doing and so often uh, we're all working on various pieces of climate change action and we tend therefore to engage within our own sectors, our own regions, but um, days like uh, the one that we have with the Means of Implementation to, uh, Day at the PCCB Hub really give us an opportunity to bring different actors together to share experiences and to really generate greater learning. And I think it's through these kinds of diverse dialogues that we really have the opportunity to learn more about the challenges and solutions and very importantly to drive innovation in those solutions. Today we have a very interesting round table in the morning dealing with coherence and coordination. The PCCB has a direct mandate to uh, enhance coherence and coordination of capacity building actions, particularly amongst bodies, constituted bodies under the convention. So this morning we had the participation of the Adaptation Fund, we have the participation of the Technology Executive Committee, the Standing Committee on Finance, the Green Climate Fund and the GEF, the Global Environment Facility. This is not the first time the PCCB has spoken with these bodies because every year during its annual meeting they organize a dialogue with all the bodies. But this, this time in the hub we decided that it would be a good idea to have a focus on the bodies that deal with means of implementation. For example, climate finance, technology and of course capacity building is, is the element that is in common to these bodies for, for this discussion. So the roundtable focus on following up on the previous discussion the PCCB had with these institutions during its annual meeting in June and try to come up with even more concrete areas of collaboration between the PCCB and these 
these bodies and these organizations. All of these organizations have a have a particular role that's relevant to capacity building, for example, enhancing the ability of uh, countries to access finance <coughs> on to, or to develop technologies. The, the uh, CTCN, for example, which is a climate technology and center and network. So there are very good opportunities for enhancing this coherence and coordination and making a greater impact in the delivery of capacity building activities for means of implementation.